Hi, and welcome to Rick's Corner. As many of you know, I just got back from Las Vegas where I was the recipient of the Joe Gold Lifetime Achievement Award, which was presented to me by World Gym. It was probably the, well it is, the biggest honor of my life, and I never knew that all these years of bodybuilding would culminate into an award like this, but I was the first one to ever receive it. And it's probably due to all the facts, it's due to a lot of things, but it's due to the fact that I've been in bodybuilding for so long and have given back so much with my views on nutrition and bodybuilding from the golden era that they thought that I was the guy. And doing the Gold's Gym logo and the World Gym logo didn't hurt a bit. That's all part of it. But a lot of you write into me, and I've, po I've posted this many, many times about the diet of the 70s because you questioned me on our carb intake and our protein intake when we trained so hard. And many of you asked, uh, it's impossible to train and get big on the amount of carbs that we were taking in. Well, no, it's not we would take protein in at least five times a day. And it would, it would be comprised of, let's say for example, breakfast would be a hamburger patty and eggs, or hamburger patty, eggs, and cottage cheese, or maybe a turkey patty and eggs and cottage cheese, and maybe a small protein drink. Then it would be to the gym, then we'd train. Um, if I got done early enough, there'd be another little protein drink, but I'd mix it with water. If not, I'd go to directly to lunch. And usually Arnold and I would go, and a few guys, and we'd go to Zookie's Delicatessen, on 5th and Wilshire, which is our hangout, and we get a cheese omelet with cottage cheese and maybe a burger patty to match. There were several restaurants in the area that we picked from that catered to our diet that would cook what we wanted. Uh, there was one called the Java Time that made us a really big burger patty. It was a half pound with cottage cheese and sliced tomatoes. That's a pretty good amount of protein. So that would be our diet, breakfast and lunch, and then of course mid-afternoon would be a protein drink, and I'd mix it with water, um, maybe have a banana, something like that in it. If I didn't have that, it would also always be a can of tuna, because tuna had a really good source of protein, and you don't get fat off tuna anyway. And then later in the evening would be steak and eggs, or steak and cottage cheese and a salad, and then of course at bedtime would be a protein drink. Now that's not a whole lot of carbs, you're right. And that would happen five to six days a week. Maybe one day during the week I'd add a few more carbs just during the week because I felt like I needed some sort of a sugar. So, you know, you, 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 you crave that, and your body craves it, you know, and you're, it's asking for something. So <clears throat> maybe I'd have a scoop of ice cream. Very rarely, though. And Sunday would be the junk day. Sunday, anything goes. Now, there's a lot of guys that eat two or three pizzas, chocolate cakes, cookies, you name it. Everything they could get their hands on. I would do somewhat of the same. Spaghetti and meatballs, maybe a cheesecake. <laughs> it was crazy. I mean, by the end of the Sunday afternoon and evening, you were so bloated, you couldn't even walk away from the table. You had to crawl on your hands and knees, blowing gas out both ends. But that was our diet. And then Monday, of course, you walk in the gym and you're bloated from eating all that stuff on Sunday. And by Tuesday, you're down again. You know, you, you, you get rid of all the water. And you ask me, why are the guys today taking in so many calories and doing so much and getting so much bigger than you were back in the 70s? Now, remember that in the 70s, the idea of bodybuilding in the beginning was to have wide shoulders and a small waist. The V taper. They always called it the V taper. They made t-shirts that were V taper. They made shirts that were V tapered. You had jackets made with wide shoulders, V taper. Look at Steve Reeves and some of those guys. That was the epitome of a good bodybuilder. Wide shoulders, small waist. Today you don't see that. And today you don't see that because of many, many reasons. Because number one, back then we didn't have the drugs they do today. If we took anything at all, it was testosterone, DECA, Anivar, and Winstrol. Pretty much that was in, or Primabol. And it wasn't taken in large amounts. Less was always more. We had a few doctors that gave it to us. A cc a week was probably about as most we're going to take. They didn't have growth hormone, or at least not ready to us. And they didn't have synthol, which is big today. And they didn't have um, insulin for bodybuilders, which was big today, because we didn't know about that. Now today, when you take today's bodybuilder and they're eating all these calories, growth horm hormone requires, and I might be wrong on this, at least 5,000 calories a day, because it's speeding you up. And insulin too, when you take insulin, you have to eat carbs right away or you can go in an insulin shock. So you have to feed the body a lot of food, a lot of food, a lot of food. <coughs> That's why they gain so much size. Now, they're training hard. Uh, I see a lot of the big guys down in the Venice, they don't even train heavy. I mean, some do a little bit, but most of the part I see them pumping light weights and just taking the synthol, which you inject into the muscle, which blows it out. That's pretty common today. It's, in fact, there's a guy on the news who just won a Guinness World Records for having the biggest arms at 30-something inches, and he's got a form at about 9 inches. That's wrong. Guinness Records should be told, this is wrong. This guy does not have a muscular arm. It's all synthol. Now, we never had that back then. We had a good muscular arm, and it was based on our diet. So today, when you see that, and you wonder why we did what we did and why we gained that, is because we trained heavy, we trained hard, and we ate good. And pretty much that's it. Sure, we took a couple of supplements here and there. You know, like I said, antivar or testosterone or Winstrol in moderation, and then we'd go off. And then we'd just train and train and train, and we'd go back on. 
when you take a little bit, you take it in moderation, you don't lose anything. You know, you, you're okay to go. But the diet is key. I mean, to get that protein high, at least 200 grams a day is what we were doing. The carbs, I didn't count, but I know that it was pretty low. I mean, I wouldn't eat uh, pasta. I wouldn't eat rice. I wouldn't eat white bread or white sugar. That was just no, not at all. If I went somewhere and they had cookies and this and that, I'd just say no. I just won't eat it. Even though I like them, I wouldn't do it. So that's why we were able to maintain what we did. Now, making the gains in the body also required a certain amount of rest. So we get our nap time in the afternoon. You know, a lot of us guys just went to the gym and, and worked out. Fortunately, I was able to wrestle at night so I could take my days free. Some guys had night jobs as bouncers. You know, you had to have an income. Some on unemployment, some just getting by. And then we go to smorgasbords, you know, all you could eat. And I've told you this story before that a lot of them changed it to the best you could eat because we ate too much. And I also told stories about going into restaurants like IHOP, which is a pancake house with a friend of mine. And we're sitting there eating, and he was still hungry, and some lady walked away from her table leaving a chicken salad, and he went over and finished it. It wasn't unusual for guys to do that back then. <laughs> I know it's weird, I know it's funny, but anything to get that extra protein. So that's how we gained. We, we just trained hard, and we ate right, and we kept our carbs low. The idea was to stay in pretty good shape all year round. We didn't have the bulking phase and training down. the bus. Maybe some guys did where you know, but I know that at the beach we didn't. Because, well, Ken Waller did. Let's say he did. He, he didn't care. He would bulk way up, not bulk purposely. He just liked to eat. And then you have to lose it all. So anytime you bulk up and you put more weight on and more weight on and more weight, a lot of you guys out there, it's fat. It's not going to be muscle. Yeah, you're going to get bigger and get stronger, but you're gaining a lot of fat. So then you've got to diet it all off again. And over time, your skin stretches, and you're not going to have that elasticity, which is going to keep you hard <coughs> and cut. So pretty much that's how it was done. So when you question me about, oh, I don't believe you guys uh, you know, did no carbs, you know, you're, you're talking to a guy that lived it. I know what we did. And if you look at pictures of me back then, you'll see where I was. I was 200 and, well, I'm not much heavier than I was now. Of course, I was bigger and thicker. I was you know, 25 years old. Things change as you get older, and I'd rather stay leaner now, so I don't want to keep the bulk and the weight. I don't need to. I don't have anything to prove. I already proved it. So a lot of you guys are right on YouTube. Who's this guy talking about this? Look me up, Rick Drayson. Do a Wikipedia on me. Go to my website, rickdrayson.com. You'll see what I've done in bodybuilding, and then you'll believe what I have to tell you, because it's all true, right from the horse's mouth to your ears. So um, take that into consideration. This is what we did, and uh, train hard, eat right. I mean, there's nothing wrong with whole eggs. There's nothing wrong with cottage cheese. That's whey protein, and then good lean, lean, lean meat, and chicken, of course, and then you have tuna, which is number one, and fish as well. It's all good protein, and a salad, and, and see how it works for you. Try it for a few weeks. So that's your answer to what we did back in the golden era, and I hope it helps. And if you have any more questions, just jot them down and send them in, and I'll get back on Rick's Corner and give you more. I'm going to bring up uh, another Rick's Corner as soon as I get the DVD back from Vegas, where I did my acceptance speech for the Lifetime Award. It's really good. It was a lot of fun. I shared my table with a friend of mine, Lou Ferrigno, and some other people, and we had a great time. So thank you for watching Rick's Corner. Thank you for supporting me. We're all over 4 million viewers now, and it's still growing. And I want to take this to radio where I can do call-ins and do like a... Uh, um, a podcast and then we can have a guest you can call in and talk to us live. I think that's going to be fun. And thank you so much for being a good fan and a good friend.